Hey everybody, it's Party Elite bringing you an early look at the Queen and the Crone DLC for Total War Warhammer 2. The wonderful folks at Creative Assembly have given me an early access key, and continuing my dive into the Queen and the Crone and the Elite Anar DLC, I want to dive into all the new units, regiments of renown, and everything that entails. I'm keeping this separate from Norska and the Resurgent update just to keep things easier to manage, and the previous video talking about the Lords, start positions, and faction mechanics can be found in the description down below and at the end of this video as well. Timestamps and links can also be found in the description below, and one final note, when looking at unit stats, you'll be seeing large unit settings based on requests I've seen from you, especially in the multiplayer community. Now, let's get started with the High Elves. Apart from the addition of Alariel and Elith Anar, who we looked at in the previous video, we also see the addition of a new hero, the Handmaiden of the Everqueen. With middling armor, but decent melee attack and defense stats, we see a unit that can hold their own in melee if needed. Anti-large in melee with 110 points of armor-piercing damage and a bonus of 35 versus large, you might send them in to finish the job every once in a while, or if you run out of the magical fire damage ammunition that can fire from a great range and cause a great deal of damage, including 125 points of armor-piercing. 15% missile resistance, charge defense against large, martial prowess, and foe seeker all help with survivability. On Elven Steed, the Handmaiden has more health, is much faster, and has a better charge bonus, and while she loses the charge defense, she can now fire while moving. On the Barded Ithilmar Steed, we see similar changes, though with added armor and reduced speed. Apart from Foe Seeker, Quicksilver Shot is the other ability a Handmaiden can bring, increasing reload skill by 10 for herself and allies within a 40 meter range. Two items are available for passive buffs as well, the Horn of Isha to help reload skill and melee attack within a 40 meter radius of herself, and Enchanted Spyglass to help increase missile damage in the same area. The first entirely new unit is the Shadow Warriors. With great range and only middling melee stats, these guys are clearly built to fight from range. The ability to vanguard deploy, fire in any direction while moving, and stalk all help create some opportunities to shoot and scoot, and the assistance of martial prowess bring melee defense and attack up slightly, allowing for some longevity in melee, maybe with some magical assistance perhaps. The Sisters of Avalorn are priced at 1100 points, bringing in solid range, magical, and fire damage, as well as 15 points of armor piercing damage, as long as they're firing away from a safe distance. The middling melee stats are assisted by martial prowess and might let the Sisters of Avalorn survive as they await backup. They'll certainly do fine against low-tier fodder troops that might be summoned to stop range support, and when push comes to shove, they can be sent into melee engagements as well. Available only when playing as Nagarith are the Shadow Walkers, another unit with middling melee stats that get a nice bump from martial prowess. They can vanguard deploy, stalk, and fire in any direction while moving, and the ranged and melee attacks cause poison damage. In melee, they also benefit from 10 points of armor piercing and a 12 bonus versus infantry. Not terrible for 1100 points. And, when playing specifically as Avalorn, you can bring Dryads, Treekin, and Treeman units. Statistically, they're the same as before, so they add some physical resistance and magic damage options to the roster, and visually, they look quite different, which is a nice touch. The first Regiment of Renown are the Scions of Mathlan, a Spearman unit with better leadership and melee stats, along with charge defense against all, and Aura of Protection, granting itself and allies within a 40 meter range a plus 12% ward save, as long as mana is over 50%. The Pure Main Company are White Lions of Shrace with better leadership and melee stats, as well as armor sundering capabilities to drop armor by 30, and the Guardian trait to give lords and heroes within a 30 meter radius of the unit an 18% physical resistance. The Armor Sundering and Guardian trait can be extremely helpful, and the unit sits at 1100 points currently. Keepers of the Flame are Phoenix Guard with leadership and melee buffs, but their melee also causes magical damage. I think that's what the Mark of Asurian does here, as I can't find any implementation of its description suggesting dead enemies catching fire. The Storm Riders are Lothar and Seaguard that played a lot of Need for Speed Underground and have better leadership, melee, and missile damage stats. They can also Vanguard deploy, fire while moving, and cause fear. It'll be interesting to see if they have a place Vanguard deployed with Shadow Warriors and Shadow Walkers to provide some anti-large protection to a small group, but these guys can only fire forward unlike their shadowy friends. The Everqueen's Court Guards are a sister of Avalorn unit with better leadership, melee, and missile damage stats, and they're also able to encourage nearby troops and carry the Banner of Avalorn, a constant buff that improves power recharge rates. The Grey are Shadow Warriors with better leadership, melee and missile damage stats, but they're able to snipe on top of everything else, which means they can Vanguard deploy, stalk, fire in 360 degrees while moving, and stay hidden while firing. 
And to top it off, they have Loic's Shroud as an ability with a 120 second cooldown that increases speed by 24% and grants them the unspottable trait, allowing them to stay hidden till the enemy is basically upon them. The Fireborn are Dragon Princes with better leadership and melee stats alongside anti-large and fire damage capabilities. The bonus versus large is 18 points, and at 1900 points, the High Elves finally have an anti-large cavalry unit. Heralds of the Wind are Illyrian Reaver archers with better leadership, melee, missile damage, speed, and charge bonuses, making them significantly more viable in melee. Especially with Martial Prowess active, they can now move in for effective flanking maneuvers, and with higher speeds, they will enable quicker hit-and-run executions. Moving on to the Dark Elves, the first brand new unit is the Supreme Sorceress Lord type. Coming in five variants, they can bring in the lore of shadows, beasts, death, fire, and dark magic. Apart from the differences in magic, they're all the same. They are not meant to get stuck in melee, they have terrible armor, 15% missile resistance, and they can take advantage of murderous prowess. On a dark steed, they get more health, better armor, much better speed, and better charge bonuses, while the cold one adds even more health and armor at the cost of speed, but grants 200 points of armor-piercing damage and the ability to cause fear. The Dark Pegasus adds speed and charge bonus, but reduces armor compared to the previous two mounts, while the Manticore buffs all numbers except for leadership, adds the Siege Attacker, causes fear, and causes terror traits. Finally, the Black Dragon goes even higher with the numbers, increasing Missile Resistance to 25% and adding the Noxious Breath ability to the unit as well. Abilities are tied to the Lore of Magic and Arcane Conduit, and spells are of course dependent on the Lore of Magic. Two items are available to each Supreme Sorceress as well. The Opal Amulet that grants 22% damage resistance for 22 seconds with a 60 second cooldown will be a lifesaver should the Supreme Sorceress find herself in a precarious situation. The second item, Arnzapal's Black Horror, is a one-time use wind spell that looks absolutely terrifying, moves rather slowly, and seems to cause a fair bit of damage, armor piercing and otherwise. Either way, it can devastate a straight line of enemy troops. Next up are the Sisters of Slaughter. Their minimal armor is mitigated by 20% physical resistance, and their bronze shields allow them to block 35% of small arms fire from the front arc as they try to close gaps. They are similar to, but slightly better than Witch Elves in every regard, though they have a much higher melee defense stat, and they replace the Madness of Cain for regular poison damage, removing anti-infantry bonuses, and rather than Frenzy, they come in with the Trial of Blades ability that recharges over 3 seconds when losing combat, and activates for 15 seconds when in melee, giving the unit slightly more armor-piercing damage and buffing melee attack by 9. Doomfire Warlocks are here to add some magical damage and more poison to Dark Elf Cavalry, able to move very quickly, but most certainly wanting to stay out of prolonged melee combat with their middling to low melee stats and terrible armor, though the latter is mitigated by a 40% physical resistance. These guys might start becoming a bit of a staple against the likes of Skaven and Wood Elves, and their access to two charges of Soul Blight and Lesser Doom Bolt with 90 second cooldowns each certainly add some more punch to the unit. There's also the addition of the Feral Manticore, unless I'm horribly mistaken, and statistically it is the same as any other Feral Manticore. The first regiment of renown to discuss are the Hellebroni Dreadspears, or I guess the Hellebronies, I don't know. With better leadership and melee stats, they also cause poison damage and get expert charge defense, giving charge defense against all enemy unit types. The Sisters of the Singing Doom are Witch Elves with better leadership and melee stats, alongside the ability to cause fear and terror. So now, not only can they cause the Madness of Cain among units they're fighting, but they can also terrify other nearby units at the same time, allowing them to really tear apart at enemy lines. Blades of the Blood Queen are Harganeth Executioners with better leadership and melee stats, alongside Frenzy and the Guardian trait, making them a lot more deadly when leadership is above 50%, and also giving them a chance to keep lords and heroes alive. The Bolt Fiends are Dark Shards with shields that have better leadership, melee, missile damage, and range stats, and also get access to Murderous Mastery for better benefits, and have the Shield Breaker trait on ranged fire, which reduces enemy shielded missile parry by 24. Slanesh's Harvesters are Doomfire Warlocks with better leadership and melee stats, and they replace the two bound spells with the Word of Pain and Soul Stealer. The former, with two uses and a 90 second cooldown, is a great way to reduce enemy melee attack by 44 and accuracy by 60%, and the one use of the latter, meanwhile, is a great way to replenish hit points while hurting the enemy. Suitably slaneshi. Knights of the Ebon Claw are Dread Knights with, you guessed it, better leadership and melee stats alongside Murderous Mastery in place of Prowess and the removal of the Primal Instincts trait. That's extremely helpful for just 300 more points than the regular variant that can easily lose control. Raven Heralds are Dark Riders with repeater crossbows, except 
extremely different. They are a much smaller unit with just 18 individuals in the large unit size, and so they have much less health. They do have better leadership, speed, melee, and missile damage stats, however, and they are also up in the air, so they're nothing like Dark Riders with repeater crossbows at all, really. And finally, the Chill of Sontar is a War Hydra that has better leadership and melee stats alongside the Frostbite ability in melee and Frost Breath as its breath attack. So it's very similar to the Hydra, only cooler. And that covers all of the new units and regiments of Renown from the Queen and the Crone as well as the Aleth Anar Free DLC. There is a ton of new stuff to play with, and there's still the matter of the secret Dark Elf monstrosity that we know nothing about. If you haven't seen my video about the Lords and Factions, check out the video link on screen right now, and if you'd like to see Hellebron in action on the campaign map, check out the other video linked on screen as well. For more Total War content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you very much for watching, and cheers.